and welcome back to the channel or welcome to the channel i am currently holding the camera so that we can take a look at this beautiful diamond painting here and how it's coming along as you can see i am almost three quarters of the way complete with this one and the kitty is done look at that little face oh look at that little face and look at the dragon's little face it looks so cute Anyway, I'm going to be working on this. We're going to be doing kind of a whip and chat of sorts. I'm actually going to do a what I wish I knew when I first started diamond painting video. So let's go ahead and get into this. We're going to work on this section over here, and I'll be right back once I'm all set up. Okay, I'm set up over here, so we'll talk about what I'm using first. First of all, I got this cute little cut reminder that I made. I love these little guys. They're so cute and they're so fun. And I turn them into cover reminders so I can just stare at them all day long. And then I got my rainbow bright one as well. She's holding back another section of plastic because why would you want just one cover reminder when you can have several? All right, I can't find her magnet, but she's okay over there. And then I have this little one right here that actually I think came with the kit. And I'm just using that as a marker to know where my video here should be um I gotta get my stuff on order in order I mean not on order in order <laughs> all right and then I'm going to use this pen this is from Jim's handmade pen shop love this pen it's the rainbow pen to go with my rainbow themed dragon here um a set of tweezers just in there randomly <laughs> I think they came with a different kit because they're purple and then I'm using this galactic putty I've been using it a lot I may not appreciate the smell but it works really well and I just been using it and then I'm also using this motley dragon tray from Nyx's notions love these trays I'm sorry about the little bit of shadow right here but I hope it's still visibly good enough so let's go ahead and get into this video. What I wish I knew when I first started diamond painting. Uh, so I started diamond painting back in 2018. I think, yeah, 2018. My husband went to help my parents out for a while and I was alone. <laughs> and I needed something to occupy my time. So I discovered diamond painting I think it was an advertisement on Facebook probably for a diamond painting company but I checked Amazon for it because I was like that looks cool and I like paint by number so I'm gonna go ahead and look into it so when I found a kit I liked I ordered it and I got it in cool right now, I knew nothing about diamond painting. Never diamond painted before. Didn't watch YouTube videos on it. Um, I knew absolutely zilch, zero about diamond painting, except that it looked cool and it was kind of paint by number-esque. So I, I opened up my first kit and my immediate problem was after I opened up the, you know, the first color and I started working on it because my first kit was a good sized kit I think I got a 50 by 60 so you know for a start a 30 by 40 probably would have been a better size to start with but no no I went with something a little larger and it was a nighttime ocean theme I don't have the picture anymore because um it I, I didn't seal it properly and it kind of died but and, you know if I did finish it and it was a nighttime ocean theme of the moon on the water and the and a palm tree and the beach and it was just a really pretty nighttime ocean theme so I started on it you know just opened it up cut my first color and <laughs> started working on it and the immediate thing I noticed was, well, how am I supposed to keep these diamonds when I'm doing another color? Like, what am I supposed to do with it? 
because as you know, they come in the little sugar packets or the bigger sugar packets uh, style that are not resealable. And if you've ever diamond painted before, if you've never diamond painted before and you're watching this, you're like, uh, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? Yes, yeah, so they come in a sugar packet style package that is not resealable. So, I got in my car, went down to Dollar Tree, and happened to find a six pack of these little containers. Not like these, they're, they're different with the, the lid snaps on and they're, they're a little bit shorter. I actually do have some somewhere in the house. If I'd prepared, I'd have grabbed them, but um, got myself a six pack of those, went back to the house and put the color into one of those containers. So like at that point, I wish I had known a little something about storage. So right now I have a standard storage next to me. I'll take a picture of it so that you can see it. It's my favorite kind of storage and you know, I just really kind of enjoy it. But at that point in time, I knew nothing and I didn't know about storage. So I had six of these little containers, which means I had six of these colors, but here's another problem. How am I going to tell what's in this container? Because, you know, like this is, it's not this container, but let's just say it is. And there's a cap on this. There's nothing to distinguish what color is in this container. So then I think I went back to Dollar General again and got the labels that you would use for labeling, um, not like this, but labeling, what do you call it? If you were to go to a yard sale or something and you wanted to price point out, and they had a package of labels anyway. So I got a package of labels and I got a little storage, not storage, but a Tupperware container. And I got I think two two more packages of the containers or one more package. I don't remember how many colors were in that particular diamond painting, but it was more than six. <laughs> we'll just say that. So I got enough containers to cover the entirety of all of the colors. And then that is what I worked out of. These little snap-on lid containers that you can get at Dollar Tree. They're still there to this day. Or at least they were the last time I was in Dollar Tree and checked. Um, and a small Tupperware container that I stuck Christmas stickers on that I got for free because for some odd reason I had Christmas stickers. I don't know. And that was my storage unit. It wasn't the best situation for sure, but it worked. So I wish I had known about storage or the storage was a thing that you needed and the different types of storage there are. Now, of course, now knowing about storage and needing storage, that this is something that you definitely need. Um, I, I have tried many different storage units, storage units, I'm going to rent out a storage unit just for my diamond painting drills. No, uh, <laughs> many different storage containers and definitely have, you know, learned which ones I like the best, which ones I will continue to use over and over again, and which ones I could just toss in the trash, not use. And at some point I will do a storage video of the storage units that are storage systems that I have currently, I, that might be going off into the, I'm just gonna put it in there anyway, even though it's off camera, um, because it's just a small section of this color. <laughs> so I'm just gonna do it real quick anyway. Uh, so I will do that at some point, but that is something that I wish I had known as a new diamond painter is storage 
you know, that you're definitely going to need storage. You need something to keep these, these tiny little things in. Um, another thing I wish I would known is the uh, upgrading the tool system. So, you know, you get, and I do have this actually sitting right here somewhere, right next to me. <laughs> I did have it. Where did I put it? Is it on the table here? Yes, it's on the table here. Okay. So, if you have a diamond painting. Ooh, that would probably had better lighting over there. Whoops. <laughs> you probably know, let me pick my next color what they come with. But if you don't, there is a standard tool kit that comes with every diamond painting. I'm trying to find like my next color. <laughs> so I'm like thinking of that at the same time here. Okay, I got it. Um, so yes, there is a standard tool kit. This is the standard tool kit that comes with almost every diamond painting that you're gonna get. This little green tray, this pink wax, and this pink pen. I probably did my first um, several diamond paintings with just this pink pen and no multi-placer on the end. So just this tip, single placing the entire time, which you know, like, that's, that's fine. People single place all the time. Like, you do what is comfortable for you. And, yeah, but I am going to talk about that. Like, knowing that at, in the, on the next topic. But, now you see what I'm using for my pen. This is quite a bit different than this pen. Now, the single placer is the same. Because I just happen to really like this tip. It works best for me. It's what I enjoy. So I use that. Um, so that is the same. But um, the multiplayer on this is a four. That's my favorite. And But you see this pen. And it's, it's chunkier. So you can get a pen in this style. This exact same shape here. The three bumps. On Amazon for they're pretty inexpensive you get a bunch of tips with them sometimes you get trays with them and they're not too too much money but they definitely feel a lot different so imagine doing your entire diamond painting single placing with just this pink pen they're thin there's not much to them so <laughs> you know, it's, it's not, it's not as easy as using this chunkier pen. Now this thing is much more comfortable in your hand for a lot of people, because I've seen this, especially if you have arthritis and stuff, these bigger pens are just much more comfortable, um, for holding. And then there's also this tray so I can show this real quick because I'm you know, upgrading the tools here. You've got your your drills in this tray and you shake them out and they you know like they kind of they kind of do. But you look at the difference in space here. So look at how much I have here compared to here. You know like you can fit this whole thing in here almost twice. <laughs> so you know, and you do get some, like this is, this is Diamond Art Club's tray. It's not a bad tray. It's a good tray. It does what it's supposed to do. And by all means, it's certainly fine. Another thing for me is the, the side of this tray. Like, I don't know if you can see that difference there in height. How much higher this one is. It's got a pretty high side. Because I tend to throw my drills around a bit. So, they also shake out really nice. So, like, I wish I had known about upgrading the toolkit. Now, back when I first started diamond painting, 
there were not Etsy shops dedicated to just diamond painting, or at least not that I know of. I don't think they were around at that point. I did stop diamond painting from about 2019 to the end of 2020 or somewhere in 2020 that I started diamond painting again. And then 2021 was when I really got back into it and even started doing events and watching YouTube videos and stuff. So back at that point in time, when I got my storage unit or my storage system, yeah, I'm going to keep saying storage unit. It's, it's going to happen. I'm just going to keep saying it. I know I am. I don't mean to, but I'm going to keep saying it. Uh, my storage system at that point in time, it came with, you probably got a bunch of trays, maybe some different sizes, but they were still the flimsy, cheap little plastic things like these green trays and a ton of the pink pens. Like I probably got 10 pink pens in one set when I started buying storage systems because they always come with little extras as well. And it's usually everything you need to diamond paint, which is true. Like this is everything you need. You can get by with just that, that system, but this is definitely makes things better. Makes life a little better. Why do I feel like you're not? Oh no, you are. Um, it changed. It was a game changer for me, for sure. And it's something that I just kind of wish I had known because, like I said, I did my first Diamond Art Club with one of those pink pens, single placing, the entire time. And I am talking this size that I'm working on right now. So this is, I mean, it was roughly around this size. What are you? Where is your size? Where is your size? Oh, this is a 22 by 33. I want to say that the first one I did was a 20 by 32 or something. I don't know. But I did my first Diamond Art Club completely single placing with just the pen that comes in the Diamond Art Club set and just the tray that comes with Diamond Art Club stuff. I didn't have an upgraded tray at that point. Or if I did, it was, again, it was still one of these, these thin ones that you get. It was kind of like that. So, cause I would call that a little bit of an upgrade from the pickle tray, the little green boat. Now I still use those little green ones. I'm not saying that they're not good. They work. They definitely work. And I still use them on occasion. I like to Use them for smaller off-canvas projects. Right now, the Disney 100 book that I'm doing, like, they, they come in really handy for that because I can just kind of, like, hold this in my hand and just quickly do, 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 because it's small. It's a, You can still hold this in your hand, but it's a little bit harder and it just gets a little bit more clunky. But it holds a lot more drills, so that's why it's, it's great. <laughs> so I guess to say what I wish I had known when I first started, started diamond painting is that there were other options when it came to trays and pens and tools that you use for diamond painting. And there are definitely, you know, these trays right here, you can only get custom made. Um... So that one is kind of a little bit harder, but this one I think was $13 and 50 cents. Like it's not that, that bad. You can find them on Etsy for reasonable prices. And if this wasn't 13 and 50 cents, this could have been like $20. Like it's not too, too unreasonable. It's manageable, especially if that's the only thing you're getting. You know, you only get one tray. That's fine. Like, all you need is one tray. <laughs> you don't need a bunch. You just need one. So, yeah. I know. I see people that collect them. Like, I see it. Like, what, why? What are, what are you going to do with all those? You can only use one at a time. I even have a ton. I Like, I only use one at a time. <laughs> I try to switch them up make them match my diamond painting because I do have a bunch but yeah 
and I still buy more. I'm like, <laughs> I'm not saying I'm like, I don't buy them. I do. I just try not to go crazy on it because I know that I can only use one at a time. But that is one thing I wish I had known is that there were other options. And these pens were available on Amazon at that time. I know they were um, probably not as nice as they are now it was probably just a straight blue pen maybe it had a little bit of sparkle in it i know they had those ones with the little pink like little flowy things in them i have a couple of those like they had those on amazon so i'm sure they were available at that time i just didn't know about it uh, i don't know when diamond painting became as popular as it is because I did take a break from it. But anyway, we'll talk about the next topic of what I wish I had knew when I started diamond painting. Multi-placing. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not something for everyone. And I know that there are people out there who just single place and that's fine. You do you. You do what you're most comfortable with. That is fine. But for me... Multi-placing has been a bit of a game changer. Um, one, I kind of enjoy working with the four. I started working with a seven, but it's still hard for me to get them straight with a seven. I'm not saying I'm perfectly straight, and I don't strive to be perfectly straight. Most of my artwork is for me or for family, and they're not going to complain if when they get up close to it, Things aren't perfectly aligned. Because for the most part, you're not looking at these diamond paintings with a magnifying glass while they're hung on the wall. You're just looking at them while they're hung on the wall. And they look beautiful, whether they're perfect or not. Um, so I don't strive for it. I don't worry about it. It's not something I I need to worry about or stress about or anything. Like it's it's fine. It works for me as it is. Do this one right here. Um so, but multi-placing itself for me was a bit of a game changer. Like once I started multi-placing, and I did kind of have to force myself to actually start trying to multi-place. So I picked a picture that I liked I just dropped my pen but didn't care as much about how it looked and I said I am going to learn how to multi-place with this picture so something like this picture right here I really like this picture but there's big sections of color blocking like you've got perfect amounts here to practice multi-placing and there's no real confetti because you can't really multi-place with confetti. Like, it gets harder with that. Especially if it's changing out. Like, it's, it's just no. I mean, you still can. Like, you see me doing two here. You can do two or even one with the multi-placer tip. Like, you don't have to switch back and forth with the, the tip. You can just use your multi-placer tip. Or you can use your, your single-placer tip. I tend to switch back and forth a lot. So... When you go to single place, I'll switch to the single placer. And then back to the multi-placer for multi-placing. So, you know, like it was something that I like wish I had known. Because I did this one canvas with huge color blocking. Completely single placing. And I would have to make a game of it. So, like, I would have to make say, you know, like this black section right here is a big square. It's not. So I'd have to like make a game of I'm going to start on the outside and just do the outside of this square. And and you can already see how much time more time it's taking me to do this than if I was. I mean, this isn't the best color to be going with because it's just straight lines. But it's taking me a little bit more time to single place than it is to just throw in. Oh, look, you know, like that section's already basically complete. 
because I was able to multi-place it. Yeah, I'll just throw you up here. <laughs> I grabbed two instead of four. Sometimes this annoys me a little bit is when you grab three and they kind of like spread out in the tray. No, don't do that yet. I have four. But yes, so I wish I had known about multi-placing. I honestly don't think I learned about multi-placing until I was watching um who was I watching? I can't think of the channel name. I can't think of the person now. I think her name's Daphne. I haven't watched these channels in a while because you know, I started watching and then they just they just became all about the unboxing videos from Diamond Art Club for the sneak peeks and and quite honestly, like, you know, like, I think a good whip and chat is good, but not everybody wants to know your entire life story. <laughs> not saying there aren't people out there that do, but I'm not one of them. I do not need to know what your kids had for lunch that day and stuff. And, you know, like, I, I enjoy a good whip and chat. Don't get me wrong. I do enjoy a good whip and chat. But <laughs> I think there are some whip and chats that are a little bit more in detail about the people's lives than they need to be. And that's all I'm going to say on that. <laughs> sometimes maybe even mine go that way. I try not to. But sometimes mine might go that way too because you do just kind of get rambling and talking and yeah. So I, I'm not a big whip and chat fan personally I don't tend to watch them as much um I will watch my friends whip and chats because I think it's good to support them in their creative direction and I know that some of them watch my whip and chats and <laughs> they tell me that I had a good whip chat or something like I'm like I feel like it was horrible thank you but yeah but anyway, so multi-placing, that is where I was going with this. And it's just something that I wish I had known about sooner or that I wish I had tried sooner. Maybe not quite what I knew, but that I had tried. Because I think multi-placers were coming to me in other kits and stuff. I was just probably too scared to try it. And so that's... That's why. But now that I do do it, I am trying to expand my multi-placing into a bigger one than the four. But the four has always been my comfort zone. I found it. It's my comfort zone. I'm good with this, this size. I can get things fairly straight. They're not perfect, but they're fairly straight. And, you know, you can always manipulate your drills a little bit on this kind of canvas. Um, you cannot manipulate drills on the double-sided adhesive canvas. I'm not saying, I, I shouldn't say you can't. You can. You shouldn't. <laughs> That's what I should say. You should not manipulate drills on a double-sided adhesive canvas because it will push the adhesive. Whereas on this one, I can move these around here all I want. This is just poured glue. And some poured glue is more slidey than other poured glue. So, you know, like it's perfectly fine. You're just moving the glue around when you're moving them. Like this one here, I want to put over here. You know, like you can just do that. You can just move it. So, you know, but that's because it's poured glue. You're just moving the glue around. When you're doing a double-sided adhesive and you go to shift them, you really kind of have to put your pen under it and lift it up instead and off the canvas and then replace it back down. That is what you should do with double-sided adhesive. So here is something that I did know, but might be good something for you to know because maybe you don't know. Maybe this is something you've never heard before. And now it's something that, wow, I wish I had known that because now, now I see that. Um, so that is how you are supposed to do your drills if you want to move them with a double-sided adhesive compared to with a poured glue. With a poured glue, just push them around. Go for it. 
all the more power to you. But with a double-sided adhesive, you really should, like this one here isn't quite straight, you know, like you really should pick it up off the canvas and place it back down and not push it. <laughs> I do push mine, I will admit it. I try not to, but I do. I do find myself pushing them and you really shouldn't because it will ruin the double-sided adhesive. So there's there's that. All right, now I think I'm gonna talk about my last one because we're coming up on a half an hour. The last thing I wish I had known when I first started diamond painting was how addicting this is. <laughs> yes. There are whole days where I am at work and all I think about is the diamond painting I have at home and how much I wanna get home and start diamond painting. Yep, it's pretty addicting. It's fun. And collecting them can be just as addicting as doing them. If you, if you do find yourself as someone new to this, it is a fun, relaxing hobby that is fairly easy to do and can even be done by children or a little bit over there, children or you know, older adults who aren't as able to do some things as they used to be able to do. They have arthritis or other things. This can be a pretty fun thing for them to sit and do. There's many different ways to do this. It's fun. I love it. And I hope you have enjoyed my video of what I wish I knew when I first started diamond painting. And I hope it was a good one. And anyway, thank you for watching.